scholars. I am Derivative Man, and this is my trusty canine companion, Decimal Dog. She's pretty, Decimal Dog. Good girl. And we're here to tell you about natural dog rhythms. Come on. Natural Logarithms, section 7.2. <clears throat> By definition, a natural logarithm is actually an integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt, and x has to be greater than 0. Cannot be less than or equal to 0 at all. Now, that being said, the derivative of ln x, which is what we're really going to need to know, is the derivative of 1, over, uh, 1 to x, 1 over t dt, now, we all know from the fundamental theorem of calculus to take the derivative of the integral. Now, you're basically undoing the integral. Now, in order to do undo the integral, you would take the top bound, substitute it in for t here, times the derivative of the top bound, minus the same of the uh, lower bound, so the 1 over 1 times the derivative of 1. Now, we all know the derivative of any constant is merely just 0. So that is a very well-known fact, which leaves us the derivative of ln x equaling 1 over x. Now this fact is really important. It is the most, I would say, the most important part of this whole puzzle is the derivative of uh, ln x is 1 over x. Now that we've defined what a natural logarithm is and looked at what its derivative is, we can look at the product rule. Now the product rule states, we already know this, the derivative of ln x equals 1 over x, but the derivative of ln of ax equals 1 over ax times the inside of the derivative. So we're really just taking the chain rule here. Now the derivative of d over dx of ax is really just a. And if we multiply that, those two terms together, we really get 1 over x. So really, if you look here, the derivative of ln x and ln ax both equal 1 over x. Now this fact is really important. It means they're different by a c, but do not worry, never fear. So really, if we let x equal 1, we have the ln of x plus c equals ln ax. Now if we let x equal 1, and the natural log of 1 is 0, which we'll prove in a moment, uh, we have the natural log of 1 plus c equals natural log of a times 1. Now anything times 1 is just itself. So we have natural log of a equaling c, because this is going to go to 0, which gives us the natural log of ax equals ln x plus ln a. Now this is also a very important fact that we have just proven and learned. In fact, it is the second most important thing to know about natural logs. Now, I'm going to do a quick proof here. Quick proof that says the natural log of 1 equals 0. Now, really, natural log is just log base e. So if we take log base e of 1 and equal some constant, we'll say m. m sounds like a good constant to me. If we rearrange these, we get e to the m equals 1. Now, anything, in, in order for e to the m to equal 1, m has to equal 0, because anything to the 0 power equals zero, uh, equals 1. Therefore, ln of 1 must equal 0. Next, we're going to look at the difference rule. Now. Here we're going to look at the derivative of ln x over a. Now, really, that would be the derivative would be 1 over x over a times the derivative of x over a. Now, the derivative of x over a is really 1 over a, and multiply that by flipping, uh, taking the conjugate here, we get 1 over x. Now, we also know that the derivative of ln x is 1 over x, so once again, we are different by a constant. So, let x equals 1 of ln of x plus c equals ln x over a. Now, once we plug in 1, we get ln of 1 over a equals ln 1 plus c. Now, ln 1 is still 0. It will always be 0. And thus, th this gives us ln of 1 over a equals 0 plus c. So, c must equal ln of 1 over a. Therefore, ln of x over a equals ln of x plus ln of 1 over a. Now, really, we could think about this as uh, a to the negative first power, right? Because anything uh, over uh, underneath 1 is 
the negative first power. So if we take ln uh, x over a equals ln x plus ln a minus 1. Now, using the power rule, which we will learn in a moment, the power rule states that if we have an exponent here, we can bring it down in front. So w our real answer is ln of x over a equals ln x minus ln a. And that is the answer for the derivative of x over a. Now that we have learned the difference rule and given a, a small intro into the power rule, let's take a look at proving the power rule. Now the derivative of ln x to the r equals 1 over xr times the derivative of x to the r. Now the derivative of x to the r is really r times x to the r minus 1 over 1, and that's just bringing the power down and, and subtracting 1 from the power. And so if you multiply those out, you end up with r over x. Now the derivative of r ln of x is r times 1 over x equals r over x. Thus, we have another constant here. This constant seems to be consistently popping up everywhere. <laughs> so funny. Anyway, the uh, natural log here of x to the r equals r ln x plus c. Now once again we'll let x equal 1 because it is uh, ln of 1 is still 0. So 0 equals r times 0 plus c. So c must equal 0. Thus ln x to the r equals r ln x. This is how we've proved that taking the power down in front works. Integrals. u is differentiable and never zero. Now, the integral of 1 over u du is really the opposite of the derivative, correct? So if we take the derivative of ln u, it will equal 1 over u. Therefore, the integral of 1 over u du equals ln of u plus c. And now, u can never be 0. Therefore, ln of u has to be in absolute power, absolute brackets. Cannot be any other way. And don't forget your c either. The constant of integration. Now, using this principle, that we have just learned and proven. I will take the integral of tangent x dx, but do not worry, I know what I'm doing. Now, we have tangent x dx is really equal to the integral of sine x over cosine x dx, correct? I mean, we know that tangent x is really sine x over cosine x. Now, using a u substitution, which my friend Skeeter Jones kindly taught us about last semester, u equals cosine of x, and when we take the derivative of both sides, we get du equaling negative sine x dx. But we do not have a negative sine x dx, no we do not, but we have sine x dx, which is a rather good thing, I must say. Therefore, we can divide out both sides by really a negative 1, getting us negative du equals sine x dx. Plugging in our u and du, we end up with the integral of negative du over u equals negative 1 times du over u, which looks an awful lot like this, this, uh, up here, 1 over u du. Thus, once we take the integration, we end up with the natural, the negative natural logarithm of cosine x plus c. Now, we got the cosine x plus c by just substituting back our u value. Alright, let's look at a few examples. Our first one is y equals x to the 4th over 4 times ln x minus x to the 4th over 16. Now, in order to take the derivative of this, we use our product rule. So we're going to have y prime equaling 4x to the 3rd over 4 times ln x plus the derivative of this times that. Uh, 1 over x times x to the 4th over 4 minus... 4x to the third over 16. Now we simplify. y prime equals x to the third ln x. This is going to cancel to give us uh, x to the third over 4. And this is also going to be x to the third over 4. Thus, y prime equals x to the third ln of x. y equals ln of ln of x. Now, 
This one might be a real problem for some of you who are weak at heart, but for those of you who are super scholars, you will know to dive right in. So, we're looking for y prime. y prime equals 1 over ln of x, taking the derivative of the inside there, uh, will give us, well, taking the derivative inside because that's ln of x. Now, the derivative of ln x is really 1 over x, right? So, what we're going to end up with y prime equals 1 over x times 1 over ln of x, or simply y prime equals 1 over x ln x. And once again, we have our answer. Moving on to the last and final and complete example, we have 8x dx uh, divided by 4x squared minus 5. Now this is an integral, so I do not see any common patterns here and cannot do this by myself as powerful as I may be. So I will use a u substitution. I'm going to let u equal 4x squared minus 5. Therefore, our uh, derivative will give us du equals 8x dx. And look at that. We have an 8x dx. So really, this is going to give us 1 over u times du equals the natural log of u plus c, which furthermore gives us the natural log of 4x squared minus 5 plus c once you uh, complete your u substitution there. And now that we've learned about natural logarithms, Decimal Dog and I must track down my arch nemesis, e to the x-man. Come on, Decimal Dog! Come on, Decimal Dog! Come here. Let's go. Well, bye. Inside, which is just known as the chain rule. Excuse me, that's the derivative phone. And now you know about natural logarithms. So thank you for your time, students, and uh yeah, let's start that one over. And now that we've learned about natural logarithms, it's time for Decimal Dog and I to track down and fight my arch nemesis, E to the X-Man. Come on, Decimal Dog, let's go! <laughs> it's time for Decimal Dog and I to go track down my arch nemesis, E to the X-Man. Come, Decimal Dog! Run. It's time for Decimal Dog and I to track down my arch nemesis, E to the X-Men. Come on, Decimal Dog. Come on, Mel. Do you play with brother? And now that Decimal Dog... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, you, you are, actually. And now that we've learned about natural logarithms, it's time for me and Decimal Dog to hit the trail looking for my arch nemesis, E to the X-Men. Come along, Decimal Dog! Come on, let's go, come on! Now that we have defined what a natural logarithm is, it, it, uh, 